You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 39. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset tools and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go. Hey there. Today we're going to talk about how we can make a man fall madly in love with us and stay like that forever. How we can cast a love spell on him. Or maybe that's not exactly it. I promise you, if I knew, I would have not been talking about this in episode 39. I would have done it in episode 1. And I probably would have been too wealthy to live in a studio right now. I admit, I wanted to tease your curiosity a bit with that title, but those of you who know me also know that I of course don't seriously tell you that you can make a man fall in love with you. After all, we still have some kind of free will. So let me be honest here. You cannot make a man fall in love with you if he's not into you to begin with. But what I wanted to share with you is what I see as the best conditions for you to attract love. And it's not with regards to how you set up a dating profile or how to communicate in the apps or something concrete like that. It's more on an energetic level. It's your energy. I call it the fall in lovable energy. You might have experienced this situation where you almost know that you're going to meet someone soon. You can feel that you're open to falling in love and it's just a question of time before it happens. It's like all the channels are open. If you think back on times where you met someone and you both fell in love, you might have had this feeling before it happened. It's the energy you are in when you love your life and you feel good about yourself. Even if you are not perfect and your life is not perfect either. It's when you want to have fun and enjoy life and you know that your ability to do that doesn't depend on a man, even if you would like to have one in your life. It is a fun, playful, joyful, abundant and unattached energy. It's when you are open to possibilities, believe that good things will happen and trust that it will unfold naturally and in time without you having to grasp onto it or push things forward. Instead, you are present and you enjoy the moment. And notice we're not talking about a feeling you have when you have the perfect career or have paid out all your loans or lost the weight you wanted or own a beautiful flat or whatever it is you dream of. This feeling is completely independent of external circumstances. It's not coming from material goods or things just happening the way you want them to. In fact, it's a feeling you can access even when the external circumstances just suck from a traditional perspective. It's coming from inside you, this energy or feeling. It's you reconnecting with your inner flame, so to speak. The life energy that we all have access to, sometimes more easily than other times. It's a feeling of falling in love with life, even if your life is no different than it was six months ago when you were not in love with it. This is a feeling that not only feels good to yourself, but also is very attractive and is where you can attract someone in that same positive frequency. So how do you access and cultivate this falling lovable energy or feeling? When I describe it as a feeling, you know from episode 28 about self-coaching that a feeling is always created by a thought. We feel the way we do because of the way we think. It's the soundtrack in our mind that creates our feelings. So it's really important to focus in on how you think and do a reality check on whether the thoughts you subscribe to are indeed the ones that are serving you the most or whether it's time to get creative and find new and better thoughts. It's like decluttering your home. Go through everything you have and get rid of the stuff that no longer serve you. Clean it up and you will have a lighter feeling afterwards. And then you have space to add in the few things that you really like and find useful. So there are two main areas you want to focus on 
and that is how you think about yourself and how you think about your life. First, let's take a look at how you think about yourself. And here you want to also include how you think about yourself as a romantic partner. This is probably the biggest and most important part of becoming an energetic match to your future partner. You have to become aware of your inner self-talk and choose what you want to think on purpose. Become aware of your inner critic. Notice what's coming from there and decide to not believe it anymore. Unsubscribe from all the criticism and choose to cultivate thoughts of self-kindness, self-compassion, self-encouragement and self-love. Even self-enthusiasm, being enthusiastic about yourself. Because I want you to not only stop thinking negative thoughts about yourself, I want you to ideally get to the place where you also know what makes you stand out. And instead of having negative thoughts about it, you own it and you see it as a unique and charming feature about yourself. And we all have an inner critic, a negative voice that tells us that we are not good enough or not young enough, or not attractive enough, not skinny enough, or not interesting enough, or too much of something and not enough of something else. The inner critic is alive in all of us and the trick is not to get completely rid of her, but to become aware of her and learn how to handle her, so to speak. So when you recognize the inner critic thoughts that you have, you can start seeing them as something your brain just does more or less automatically, because that is basically it. Our brain has a lot of automatic negative thoughts and is wired in all of us to think that we might not be good enough and we should try harder or there's a risk that people won't like us. Then you can choose to shift your thoughts to something that feels more inspiring and encouraging. Because most of the negative thoughts we have about ourselves are rarely fact. They are opinions and judgment. So they can be challenged. You can find different ways of seeing things. This is relevant for all the thoughts you have about yourself, your personality, your habits, your quirks, and the way you look, including your body. So how do you get a hold on all these thoughts? Where do you begin? One thing you can do is to start asking yourself the following. How much do I love myself as a person on a scale of 1 to 10? Or you could ask yourself, how much do I believe that I'm a catch? Again, rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. And then if you're not a 10, then ask yourself why. What prevents you from being a 10? And write it all down. And then you look at your thoughts. And so here you want to ask yourself for each of the thoughts. Is it really true? And then if you feel there is some truth in it, then you get to decide if you want to own it or change it. And if it's not true, then of course you can just decide to not believe the thought anymore and you get to move out on the scale and get closer to 10. Make peace with the things you do not want to or cannot change and then decide to work on the rest. And choose to see every little insecurity as something that makes you special and unique. You can choose to think, Yes, I know I'm like that. This is me. This is who I am. I'm someone who laughs a lot. Or I'm someone who loves to tell lame jokes just because they're bad, if that is what you like. So decide to own what you don't want to change. Make it something that's special about you. A charming and unique feature. You are not like everyone else and you don't want to be that. So find out where you stand out and choose to embrace it. So when you're done reviewing all the thoughts you have about yourself and you have decided what to keep and not, then you can phrase a few power thoughts about the things you want to truly own about yourself and write them down and remind yourself who you are and why that's just amazing. You want to do the same when it comes to the way you look and your body and make it a habit every time you are in the bathroom to glance at yourself in the mirror and remind yourself of what a catch you are and how amazing you look. And this is not about being perfect. It's about having the right glimpse in the eyes. Life is too short to strive for perfection and nobody even knows what it is anyway. So it's better to own your perceived imperfections and embrace them. So next you want to also look at your thoughts about your life and your future. Get curious about how satisfied you are with your current life and where you are right now. And if you're not happy with it, Then instead of beating yourself up for not being where you thought you would be by now 
or blaming others for not having supported you enough, like your parents or your ex, for instance, or maybe even having blocked you in some way. Instead of doing that, you want to ask yourself, what would it take for me to be satisfied? What do I need to do? What are the steps I can take right now to create the life I want? Most people tell themselves that things are not possible and they tell themselves that way too much. And I know this because I changed my career several times and basically every time people have told me that they wish they could do the same but they just didn't think it was possible for them. And I would always wonder why on earth they couldn't do it and why they chose to limit themselves like this. You can do so much more than you think. It's really a question of getting creative and in some cases decide to lower your living standards if you want to throw yourself into a new career, for instance. So how you think about your life in terms of possibilities and commitment to create what you want, this is all a choice. It's not about having the best cards on your hand. It's about playing the ones you have in the best possible way. It's not about having all the answers. It's about committing yourself to do what you can to find the answers you need and create the life you want. So once you have now rewired your thoughts about yourself and your life, you are going to feel much more abundant in joy and possibility. You see that you're a catch for your future partner, the partner that you want to attract. You know what you want him to love about you and you also have an exciting and fulfilling life or at least you are on a journey to create that. And because you enjoy your life, you are not in a hurry to find love and that is important because an important part of being in this energy is to be present and enjoy the moment as often as possible. Get the most out of every moment instead of thinking about what is missing and what you hope will come in the future. This is an energy that not only feels better for yourself, but it's also very attractive to your future partner, especially compared to the energy of, for instance, feeling that you are not good enough or young enough or pretty enough or smart enough, or that you are not where you want to be in your life because you are incompetent or other people never supported you. Now, I know I'm exaggerating a bit, but you get the point. There's a huge difference between those two kinds of mindset. And the external circumstances could be exactly the same. So the cool thing about this abundant and joyful energy is that you are open to love, but you don't really care when it's going to happen and you know it's not necessary for you to enjoy life. When a man experiences this energy, he's going to want to be part of it. Who wouldn't, right? You are the party he wants to join. You are magnetic to a man like this. He can see that you have this energy, you have a flame inside you, you have something that makes you stand out, the ability to create a life of joy and abundance, and he is of course going to be attracted to that. And he also can feel that you love yourself and embrace your imperfections with grace and a little glimpse in the eyes instead of giving yourself the critical look in the mirror. And this self-love will also attract him and make him feel safe to be himself as well. And when a man feels like this in your company, he's of course going to come back for more again and again. He's going to want to spend more time with you and to be in your energy. It's a true win-win because you already benefit from this energy on your own. So I want you to try this out and once you have experienced it, once you feel this energy and see how attractive it is to others, I want you to understand when you are in the midst of this fall in lovable energy, That you did this. You created this energy from your mind. You attracted a man into your life. And you can do it again. This is not dependent on him. It's not coming from him. It's coming from you. It is your creation. How cool is that? So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for listening and have a beautiful week. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you'll also help other women find it.